This video will give you a tour of the IBM SPSS statistics interface and sort of the lay of the land inside this software. Now, by default, when you first get SPSS, it will open this welcome dialog every time you start up the software. I really don't like the welcome dialog. Um, and so the first thing that I normally do is check this don't show me this again box down at the bottom. Um, now, if you do like to use the welcome dialog, you can generate a new data set up here in the, the new files little part portion of the window. You can access some of the recent files that you've used here, or you can open some other kind of file here. Um, but I prefer to use the windows. There are the menus for those things. And here uh, under the file menu, this is how you can generate a new file and you can actually generate either a data file or a syntax file or open a new output file, etc. We're primarily going to work with data files and output. Um, and then if you go to open files, uh, you can also specify at this point that you're going to open either a data file or an output file. What we're going to do is actually enter a new data set here into this window. And for this purpose, I'm going to call upon uh, the materials that Andy Field has created. And I've got that on half of the screen. So let me just sort of tuck this into that half. Perfect. So the data set that I'm about to show you comes from Andy Field's fifth edition of the Discovering Statistics textbook. Um, and it's actually table 4.1. There are two views that you can use when looking at data files in SPSS. This is the data view. And this view allows you to see the records uh, and all the values in the individual variables, right? And so this looks just like a spreadsheet because that's the common interface for quantitative data sets. If we go to the variable view, however, this is where we get to define the various fields that we're working with and what kind of data those fields hold. So I'm going to go ahead and type in um, these fields. So across the top of this table, I'm going to enter those uh, variable names. So now you can see that I've entered the seven variables here. Now I have not specified anything else having to do with these variables yet, but just look as I go from this view where the variables are listed in each row and I get to work with various attributes of those variables, to the data view, by clicking down here at the bottom where it says data view, now you can see that the variable names I typed in are at the top of the column. So in this column, we'll hold the alcohol variable, and this column will hold the friends variable, and so on. And then each record here uh, is gonna hold the values for each individual participant. So let's go back to the variable view real quick and define what kind of data these are going to hold. So the name variable, so when we click on the variable type, you'll see this little ellipsis button here to the side that will launch a dialog that you can work with. So by default, all variables that you create are going to be numeric and they're normally, you know, eight digits with, with two decimal places and whatnot but the name variable, we want to be a string, right? So we change that to string, and now we get a limit of eight characters, which looks like Graham is our longest name, and it's six letters long, so that's fine. We'll, we'll stick with that. Click OK. Um, now, uh, the rest of it we'll, we'll get into in a little bit, but you'll notice that as soon as we selected string here, over here in the measure column, it automatically identified this as a nominal variable because string variables really can't be anything else, right? And so nominal is, is how it's labeled. So we'll click on the data view tab and real quickly, I'll just enter these names. So that was pretty quick, right? I, I'm, I'm a really fast typer. All right, so um, now these these names are ent entered in, and that will uh, will represent each record in our sample, each unit of analysis. So 
people are our unit of analysis, and this information is Ben's information, and this information is Andy's, and so on. Now, you may notice that as soon as I typed in a value in one of these fields, the record number on the side became black instead of gray, as if to say, oh, we actually do have some records here now, whereas, you know, I could fill in all the way down to 32, but I don't actually have 32 records. I only have 10, so all these numbers are grayed out. The other thing you might notice is that as soon as I entered a name, all of the other variables got filled in with a dot. So the dot is SPSS code for there's no value here, right? So I've got a record. It has some information in it, but this variable has no data. That's what the date, the dot means. Now, let's go through and um, specify the, the types or, or the attributes rather for the other data fields. So if we go back to the variable view, we want to set the type for each of these. The birth date is, of course, a date field, and it's got all these formats. I'm going to go ahead and use this first one, uh, two-digit day the brief name of the month and four digit year. And so it'll uh, sort of enforce that format as we type it in. Uh, then job, um, I'm not going to enter that as a string. So what I notice is that there's two different possible values, right? So this is a categorical variable, but it's dichotomous. So I'm going to leave that as a numeric value. I don't need uh, decimal places, right? Categor in categorical variables, decimal values don't really make any sense. Um, and I also don't need a width of eight. It's actually only going to hold a one or a zero. So I'll make that uh, a width of one. Um, friends is numeric. Again, decimals don't make any sense. We'll take those out. Uh, oh. I can't just delete it. I have to tell it zero decimals. There we go. Um, alcohol units, and uh, so maybe we'll call this uh, drinks per week um, as the units. So these are all in whole numbers. So I can go ahead and get rid of those decimal places. Uh, income is in pounds annually, and neuroticism is a commonly used uh, scale for measures of personality and psychology, um, and so we're going to collect data on how neurotic each of our participants are. And so that goes there. All right, now, the other thing that we can do is add a label for the variable. So the variable name must start with a letter, and it must contain only letters or a certain small subset of special symbols. Uh, there, there can also be numbers in it, but there can be no spaces, which is why I typed in birth date, uh, all one word, um, and I did the camel case thing, so the date is capitalized as well, but there's no space between them. Uh, so we can add a label so that that prints nicer on reports and output. So. I'm actually going to put in date of birth to give it a little bit more uh, description. Um, and notice I shortened the, the field for, uh, number of friends to just friends. So I'm going to type that in the description. And uh, Alcohol, I'll put in, and I'll go ahead and describe the unit here. And income, in pounds per year. Uh, and then neuroticism will need a label. So if you don't put in the label, it will simply put in the 
variable name in its place in the output. Now, in this case, the job field is numeric, but we don't want to display numbers here. We want to display these two possible values, right? So under the values column, when we click here, we'll, we'll click the ellipsis button. This is where we get to define how we're going to code these. Now you do have a couple of options. One thing that I can do is make one equal to lecturer and two equal to student, right? And so it'll show up this way. Um, however, I, if I were going to use this data set in a regression equation later, I would actually have to convert this to what's called dummy coding. And so uh, you can actually include dichotomous variables in a regression equation as long as the two groups are coded such that one group is zero and the other group is coded as one, right? So what I'm going to do is actually take the student value. Um, I'm going to leave the label for it as student. I'm going to change the value to zero and then click this change button here. And so you can see that it changes it. So now zero equals student, one equals lecturer, and I'll click OK. Now that value is listed here. Uh, the other thing that I can do now, there's no missing data here, but if I wanted to use a specific value to indicate that the data was missing, then I can enter that here. And so we'll, we'll actually use that with a later data set um, so that I can show you the, the usefulness of that. Uh, columns is how much space it takes on the screen. You can adjust this either by changing these numbers or you can drag the borders between the variables on the data view and it'll change how much space is allowed for it. Now under measure, this is where uh, there are three options. There is scale, ordinal, and nominal. And from the previous video, you know, categorical data, data is either going to be ordinal or nominal. And so there's a nice little graphic here that sort of depicts what that is. Um, and then a scale variable is a continuous value. So dates are uh, essentially scale variables because they mark uh, a progression of days. Job is nominal. Friends is scale, right? Um, and it's actually a ratio scale uh, because there, there is actually a true zero. Um, zero would represent the complete absence of friends. Uh, alcohol is also scale. Um, and it's also possible to have a true zero here, so it's a ratio scale. Um, but SPSS doesn't care about the difference between interval scale and ratio scale. It calls them both scale. Um, same thing with income. Income is a scale va variable. And neuroticism is a scale variable. This one, however, is an interval scale, not a ratio scale. And so that's something that we have to keep in mind as researchers as we interpret the output because SPSS will not treat the data any different. And then this last column, role, is the role for the field. Uh, They're all going to be input um, and we're actually not going to mess with this column at all. So now when I click over to the data view, I can begin to enter these data. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and enter everything for Ben and then sort of fast forward and have everything else entered too. So for this, whoops, uh, zero, three, there we go. Three July of 1977. And you'll notice that I typed in lowercase July and it capitalized it, right? So it recognized it. Remember that job is a dichotomous variable. So we've dummy coded it and we coded it such that lecture equals one and student equals zero. 
So we enter a one there. Uh, we'll enter the number of friends, number of drinks, the income, and the neuroticism, right? Now, here's where this button is kind of nice. This changes between the value labels and the raw data. So if I click this, notice that under job, it now displays what the number one means. So it displays lecturer. Whereas when I click that again, it goes back to the number. Um, I tend to like working with the values in their numeric format, um, but it's also nice to go back and, and click the value labels button so that you can see what's what and just sort of verify your data. So let me go ahead and enter the rest of these. All right there, so now that I've got my data all entered, I can compare then that uh, the data that I have in the table is the same as the data that I have uh, in SPSS. I can click the value labels. Look, there's the first five are lecturers, the next five are students. So everything is squared away. I can go ahead and maximize this then. I no longer need to look at that. Now, uh, I'm going to need to go ahead and save this. I can either do that by clicking on the picture of a disk, or I can go to File, Save, or File, Save As. And save that. Now, this is the output window. Anytime you do anything in SPSS that requires it to do some processing, it will tell you in the output window what it's done. Also, all of your analyses are going to pop up in the output window as well. So you can see save, out file, here's the, the full path name of where I put it. Uh, and it didn't fit on one line, so it's got the, the plus, and then here it finishes up. Uh, the extension is .sav with slash compressed, right? So, most of these code bits, you won't have to read and decode, but it's nice to have in there so that you can see exactly with which file you did each operation when you save your output. Now, you can also save your output, which I'll show you after we do a couple analyses. To switch back, I need to come down here and choose my data table. So that's just sort of basic data entry. We'll get into exploring this data a little bit later.